Extra, extra, read all about it. Tiny bug flies 3,000 miles. You see this? It's really cool. It says it's the size of the weight of a paper clip, and it can fly all the way from Canada down to Mexico within a matter of months. This is really cool stuff, but this isn't front page news. In fact, it's not news at all. This happens every single year in the annual migration of the monarch butterfly. Now, y'all have probably seen, or you probably know all uh, of monarch butterflies. In fact, it's probably one of the first species of butterflies you ever learned as a child. Um, they're very, very popular. They have, uh, they're, they're very recognizable too. They have, um, they're, they're bright orange, bordered by this kind of these elegant black veins uh, covered with speckles kind of bordered around the edge. Um, super, super distinctive. Um, they also have such an amazing natural history. Their migration is so interesting that they're one of the most studied insects in the world. And um, today we're gonna delve into that a little bit. My name's Luke Williamson, I'm a naturalist, um, and we're gonna talk about what I think is the, most, the greatest migration in the whole world. Oh, hey look, it's a gray whale. Oh, you think you have a, a even greater migration? Tell me about it. Wow, set a world record earlier earlier this year actually, uh, found a, a gray whale had migrated from Russia down to Mexico. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing. And back too, Th 13,000 miles. That is an incredible migration, truly. Whoa, hey, it's an uh, Arctic turn. Wow, and you set the world record for longest distance. Tell me about it. Wow. <laughs> From Antarctica up to the Arctic and back down to Antarctica again in one year, that's 44,000 miles. That's a crazy migration. But guys, have you, uh, do you migrate with hundreds of millions of your friends? Do you... Um, does your migration last generations so that no one individual has ever actually been to its final destination? I don't think so. Monarch migration is really unique in this way, especially considering what's migrating. A monarch has these large wings. Butterflies just have large wings um, compared to their body size, which means that they're not really designed for flight over long distances. Um, Flapping their wings takes a lot of energy to be able to move all that. So monarchs try to minimize the amount of uh, monarch, monarchs try to minimize the amount of flapping time that they have during their migration. Um, I'm going to use a, a piece of tissue paper right here, and I've folded it in a way that it's going to tumble as it flies. Now I'm going to walk behind it with this canvas. I want you to see what happens. Not a perfect flight, but do you see that? I could actually control where it was going, and it's all because I was making an updraft with this uh, with this canvas. The air was um, getting bounced off the canvas and pushing upwards, which was bringing this light piece of paper upwards. Essentially, that's what happens with monarchs. Only there's not men carrying canvases behind them. There's uh, there's updrafts created by the heating of air, the heating of the earth, and also winds, and they can sail, um, monarchs can sail for up to 200 miles in a day, a long distance to be covered. Now, that said, there's a lot of dangers going from Canada to Mexico. They have predators, um, open water, they don't like to go there. They also have um, winds going the wrong direction, and even rain. Butterflies can't fly in the rain, so they lay low during those periods. They're very, they're they're pretty delicate, their wings. Now, the monarchs that are flying down to Mexico have never actually been there before. They were born up in uh, the northern United States and, and Canada, southern Canada. And they, but somehow they are able to find Mexico and it's all mostly through instinct. And scientists are still studying how they are able to find Mexico. But there's a, a few things that we know and it is, um, at least believed that monarchs use a compass, 
um, kind of a sun compass. They know where the sun is and also our uh, magnetic field. They hook up onto the magnetic field. So using the position of the sun in the um, north, uh, the north pole and south pole magnetic field, they're able to figure out which direction um, they're going. But we also have really um, interesting geography in North America. And it kind of creates this funnel shape down into Mexico. Remember, butterflies don't like flying over the open ocean. So they will go around and kind of follow the coast, which brings them down into Mexico. Nope. Uh, they also don't want to fly over big mountain ranges. So the Appalachian Mountains also help to direct butterflies down into central Mexico. Um, the Rocky Mountains as well is also an area of kind of a border. There are, and, and there are butterflies, there are monarch butterflies on the other side of the Rockies, but these butterflies actually will migrate down to south, southern um, California, near the coast. So uh, a little, uh, still an amazing distance, but much larger population comes down to this area in central Mexico, and they start leaving at about, in about August. Now, in... Uh, around Halloween time, or uh, the Mexican Dia de los Muertos, there is, um, the monarchs begin to arrive in south central Mexico. And if you were a monarch flying that large distance, you would probably want to take a rest somewhere. And monarchs don't want to stay on the beaches because it is too exposed to wind and rain. It's too warm down there. There's also not a lot of food plants. So, they end up going up into the um, up into the mountains, about two miles high. There's about 12 peaks, with um, within about a, a 70 mile range, and they will they stay up there and um, well mostly sleep. It's pretty cool. Remember they're cold blooded, and it they need those cool temperatures because if it gets too warm, their metabolism will start will start kicking in. They're going to start eating all using all those energy reserves that they had built up over time. Now, as monarchs, um, as springtime comes around, March comes back around, monarchs will begin to fly further north. They don't want to hang around Mexico. There's way too many down there. It, in good years, you can have up to a billion monarchs all down in south central Mexico. So what they're going to do right now is, um, so what they're going to do is start flying north. And there's something in particular that they are looking for, and that is milkweed. Milkweed is a um, is a kind of a uh, a very interesting plant. It has these really cool seed pods with these cool parachute-like seeds on them, and milkweed uh, really has made it clear through a series of adaptations that it does not want to be eaten by anything. It has these fuzzy hairs, and bugs don't really like to eat fuzzy hairs um, on their leaves, and neither do I. And they also have um, this milky sap inside of the leaves that have has latex in it and also some some toxins and butterflies can uh, monarchs can eat these somehow and accumulate these toxins in their bodies so that when a animal does eat a monarch it can get pretty sick or it at least tastes really really bad and so um, that's why monarchs are so brightly colored it's like a big um, it's kind of a bright warning sign to everybody that hey we don't want to be eaten we're going to taste really bad if we do get eaten so there are even some species that even try to mimic the look of a monarch now monarchs are um following this uh, trying to find milkweed they, they actually will fly north until um until they find milkweed normally in texas in the southeastern united states and then they'll lay eggs on the milkweed and they'll die and they'll fly um after after that, the eggs will hatch, and in about a month, they'll become adult butterflies again after going through their full life cycle. And they'll go further north, and then they'll lay eggs, and they'll die. And then another generation will go further north until they reach the northern part of their range. Now, the monarchs, um, the monarchs, the next generation that comes from here is the generation that's going to fly back down to Mexico. So that's about four generations that it took to get up there. So when they fly back down, that is the great grandchildren of the monarchs that flew down the previous generation. Now the journey south is 
a difficult journey, but the journey back north is getting more and more difficult, and that's because we're losing our milkweed populations in the United States. There are um, a lot of uh, mil milkweed grows on the sides of roads. It grows in it, it grows in crop fields, and when we develop these areas or we use herbicides on all our crops, we start to lose all this milkweed habitat for the monarch butterflies. The good news though is that you can do something to help monarch butterflies. You can plant milkweed and bring back the butterflies. There are a lot of really, really pretty species of milkweed, some coming in even pink and orange flowers. Um, and you can really uh, have an amazing butterfly habitat with this awesome, awesome plant. And if we work real hard and we can get more of this planted, we can ensure that monarchs are always going to migrate and that we will always get to witness this amazing natural phenomenon every year.